That's why God made us a body, because we need, I don't know about you, I ain't looking to get rid of any pieces of my body. And so we need each other. And what a wonderful presence of God that we have dwelt in from the beginning even unto this moment. And how many of you know that God is not finished yet? Yeah. Hallelujah that God is about to give revelatory insight into his divine word, that we may leave this place not only energized and reinvigorated, but given certain insight to his word so that you can live during this day as a successful Christian. Amen. How many of you are a witness that, hey, I want to be successful. I just don't want to be a Christian. I want to be, hallelujah, more than put those hands down. Grab your word if you can at this time. Hmm. Turn to the book of Genesis chapter 13 and I want to look at verse 12. Genesis chapter 13 verse 12. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. The word of the Lord for the people of God. You can take your seat. I can tell people already get, I love it. People, people running ahead to my point two and three. <laughs> already getting a picture and that's what the word of God should do. Today we continue the series, Tents, and the sermon today is entitled, Make Your Move. Make Your Move. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> hmm. This series is called Tents. Surely one week after Bermuda Day, 24th of May, there can be no doubt as to the importance of tents and the location of your tent. Indeed, as I drove through Front Street in the early evening of May 23rd, I was convinced that people take seriously where they have their tents pitched. Tape, rope, bodies, and even cars held the spot for where their family tent would be pitched. It did not matter whether the property was the valuable premises of H.A. and E. Smith. It did not matter if the car was parked on a double yellow line. It did not matter one bit that the police officers in the weeks leading up to 24th of May had warned the public about claiming certain spots. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Days 
Das before. Wait, rewind. Das before. Das before some folks were on a rotor, a schedule. Lord Jesus. A duty to hold their spot for 24th of May. <laughs> now for the sake of our sermon, I must stress something and here it is. The fact of the matter is that most families decided on where they will pitch their tent based on having a good view of the parade. They would see it all. They desired to see all and be a part of the celebration. For you see, church, the closer you are to the action, <laughs> the more you feel a part of what's going on. The more you see, the more you feel as if you are connected to what you see. Church, church, church. What if the children of God had the same passion when it came to finding their seat in the house of God? What if the people of God sought to be a part, my Lord, of the action, or should I say, a part of the moving of the Holy Spirit? What if, if the pastor came down the steps to walk the parade route, I mean to walk the aisle of the church, and she found that the place was packed with onlookers desiring to be a part of the move of the Holy Ghost, and desiring to be connected to all that will go on in the house of God. Well, I've got to put a disclaimer in because for sure enough good, when I walked in church this morning, I said I feel the power of the blessed Holy Ghost. It seems like the people have pitched their tents, have gotten their containers, have gotten their chairs, have roped off their spots, are ready to worship God in spirit and in truth. I said, it looks like I've got some people who want to feel the Holy Ghost, who want to move with the Holy Ghost, who want to feel the Shekinah glory today. My God. But Deacon Stephen, how, how would it be if the people felt this way every Sunday? If we went over our scheduled praise and worship, 55 minutes, a half an hour. Can I trouble somebody today? All it takes is a people who have decided from Monday, when I get in God's house on Sunday, when I feel the glory of God, when I get in the atmosphere, I'm going to lay down my burdens, I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to look unto the hills from whence cometh my help, knowing that my help cometh from the Lord. And I've just decided that it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what happened last week. I've decided that today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Do I have anybody that wants to worship? Jesus. Church, there is something to, to be admired <laughs> about the passion of those who are gathered to watch the parade. Yeah, 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 church, I am so convinced that when the church is consistently passionate about something greater than a parade, that there will actually, watch this, be those who will gather to watch the church set the world on fire. Let me announce something to you. Let me just make it plain that there is a plan for Shekinah Worship Center that we will ignite a praise, ignite a worship, ignite a people that when other people look on, they won't have to think about it. They won't have to question it. They won't
don't have to think about it at all. They'll know that that is a people who have decided that they are going to be renegades for the gospel. They're going to be passionate. They're going to do what God has called them to do. My, 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 my. Listen. It won't be so cut. It will be God you brought us thus far. It won't be Calypso. It will be God you know. It won't be reggae. It will be ready, ready, ready. It won't be bump and grind. It will be Lord God, I'm glad you're mine. Jesus. Oh, glory. Y'all want to start some trouble. How you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? Oh! Just wave your hands in the air like you really do care. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. Listen, it won't be one day called Bermuda Day. It will be every day called the Lord's Day. I'm, <laughs> I am excited, not for one day of the year, but for 365 every day that God wakes me up with a sound mind, the use of my limbs, with a mouth to praise him and to magnify his name. I'm excited every day. Every day is the Lord's day. Church, I believe that it's time to pitch our tents towards heaven and remind Bermuda and the world that there's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. There's a highway to heaven. Walking up the king's highway. Tell your neighbor, watch where you pitch your tent. Yeah, warn him, warn him. <laughs> hey, hey, that reminds me, I heard a couple of stories when I got back on the island. I heard a couple of feminists were having a couple of moments when somebody tried to take their spot. <laughs> but, but I heard some feminists had issues. But I'm kind of liking that because let me tell you something. I refuse to come into God's house and let the enemy, let anybody keep me from my spot. Pastor, where's your spot? Anywhere in God's house, anywhere I can praise him, anywhere I can glorify him, that's my spot. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Glory to God, my spot. My spot, that's why I got to be careful where I go to worship. I got to be careful because there, you know, there's something about my spot. There's a freedom of my spot. Uh, there's a liberty about my spot. I, I know I can come in Shekinah and not be limited by time. I, I know that when I feel God in the atmosphere, that I can absolutely just dwell there for a little while and enjoy my spot. I don't know about you. But I was in sin one day, and God brought me from out of sin. And now that I've been marked as a child of God, I'm not going back. I'm going to keep my spot. Oh, tell your neighbor, I'm going to keep my spot. Tell him, I'm going to keep I'm keeping my spot. You have to arrest me. As a matter of fact, I've already been arrested. Forget it. I've been arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. I've been arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. Too late. I'm busted. <laughs> Book of dinner. Dana -na 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 -na. Hawaii 5 -oh. Dana -na -na -na. What? Dana -na 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 -na. Dana -na -na Look it up. <laughs> that was 
my show. Garrett. Lieutenant Garrett. She start trouble up in here by getting me distracted. Yeah, we have to watch <laughs> where we pitch our tent. This is what we will deal with as we look at our text. In so doing, let's look at the following three points. Point number one, it looks good. It looks good. Uh -huh. Point number two, looks are deceiving. Mm -hmm. I like that. And point three, now look here. <laughs> now look here. <laughs> Glory to God, you know that. Let's deal with the children of God. Point number one, it looks good. Saints of God, it is imperative that you understand that the more things change, the more things actually remain the same. Church, it is vital that you get it. You must get that the enemy of our soul seeks to operate by the same plan of God. Only the purpose and the plan of the enemy is for destruction and not production. Satan understands the power of the word of God. Proverbs 29 and 18 reads, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Satan's got that. Satan knows that God's word is solid, settled, sure, and secure. Therefore, the enemy of our soul must use the same principle of God's word to bring about doubt, despair, destruction, and death. God wants his people to have a vision. Satan also wants God's people to have a vision. God desires that you choose his spot, his path, and his plan. Satan desires that you choose his spot, his path, and his plan. And church, it is you who must decide where you will pitch your tent. In the text set before us, we see Abram. Ah, whom God called to leave his home, leave the place of familiarity, leave all that he knew, leave all those that he knew and move on. Ah, following the voice and calling of God to look for a new city, a place with hatch foundation whose builder and maker was God. What? Wow, what a place. Looking for God's place for you. Oh, I think I want to stop right there. Listen, and let me tell you, let me tell you, when you find a God spot, when you find the place where you feel his presence, mark that spot. Because I guarantee you, as much as you found a hallowed place, as much as you found the place that God has for you, the moment that you find that spot, the enemy has to get you distracted and off that spot. You got to get that. Oh, wow. Well, you see here, God wants you to be in the place that he has purpose for you. You know, ask the question, God, where would you have me to be? God, I will not settle for just any old spot. God, I want the location that you already said belongs to me. While Abram traveled to find his God place, his nephew Lot tagged along with him. Well, sometimes it may seem a nice thing when somebody wants to go with you. The challenge will eventually show up when you realize, recognize, that there was a reason God told you to leave your father's family behind. For Lot was going to cause a lot of trouble when you carry to your new place. A person whose mindset is not new, you will find that old mindsets are going to be carried into the new place that God just has for you. In other words, if you carry the wrong person with you, you can cancel out the new that God has just for you. The text. The text. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan 
that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as cometh unto Zohar. Church, understand this today. In order for you to be drawn off track, the enemy will not show you a mess. No. The enemy will show you something that is appealing, something that looks good, something that you even envisioned. Lot looks towards the plains on the outskirts of Jordan and is captivated by its beauty. One commentary said that it was a place of extraordinary beauty and fertility. Church, I wonder if I can get you to understand something here today. That what your eyes see, your heart feels, and what your heart feels, your mind accepts as being the right thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The, the scripture, Lord have mercy, tells us that this place was beautiful. It was as beautiful, hear me, it was as beautiful as the Garden of Eden. It was as beautiful as Egypt, and it was indeed as beautiful as Sodom and Gomorrah was. Church, understand that before the serpent entered into and beguiled Eve, the Garden of Eden was a perfect utopia. Yes. Church, understand that Egypt was beautiful and a rich place of fertility and safety before the Israelites were made slaves in that land where they had gone to obtain food through a time of famine. Church, understand that Sodom and Gomorrah was a beautiful place of prominence and prestige before they began to flow in the accursed being and this brought about the destruction of their place. Be it known, church, that Satan will always present to you a picture of perfection, peace, and progress in order to persuade you to make your move a move that is really against God. And church, today I am here to remind you that outside of God's will and God's word, you will find that you are heading, number two, you are heading to a place and it's no good. It's no good. Take a look with me, church. Take a look at something here with me in verse 11. It's crucial. Crucial. Somebody say crucial. I would call verse 11 the transitional verse for it shifts. See, there's a positive shift and a negative shift, right? For it shifts Lot into a place and space that he has never been before. Verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Key phrase, they separated themselves the one from the other. All of this time, Lord Jesus, this is sweet. All of this time, Lot had been with Uncle Abe's. All of this time, Lot had been receiving, hear me, an overflow of blessings from Uncle Abe's. Remember, that Lot left his home yes. with the blessed man of God, Uncle Abs. Yes. And now, because of what Lot sees, yes. he is willing to separate from Uncle Abs. Mm. <laughs> Get this, people of God. If you are being, Lord have mercy, blessed abundantly in the presence of a leader, if you are experiencing the overflow of blessings and all is well, then the wise thing to do is stay right there next to the leader. For you are pretty much guaranteed to keep on being blessed. Yet Lot separates from Uncle Abe's. And what does he then do? Hmm. Verse 12. Take a look. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled 
in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. All right, Elder, if you would help me out. Aaron, uh, set me up a tent. Set me up a tent. Pitch a plant. Yeah, yeah, right over here, right over here. Yes, sir. Pitch it up. Just pitch it up. Yeah. Hold it up. Got to be taller than me. All right, yeah. Yep, that works, construction crew. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll say it again. And Lot hmm, dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Lot went from being in the presence of Uncle Abram to a location that caught his eye. Location, location, location. That's what they say it's all about. Where are you going to put your house on location? It's got to be a location. If you're like me, you watch HGTV channel 46, and it's about location. The man only got $750,000, but he wants to be house, house by the water with six bedrooms. But anyway, I'm just remembering. But location, location, location. Ah, glory to God. Lot began in the plain in verse 11. Just in the plain. Plain, oh, plain. Just a plain, Jane. Just plain. Just plain. Mm -hmm. But by verse 12, Lot is in the cities of the plain. Lot is going to the city. Moving to the city. Uh, in other words, the lights, the cameras, and action of Broadway have caught the sight of Lot. While Uncle Abe's, Uncle Abram, is looking for a city which has foundation whose builder and maker is God, Lot chooses a city that caught his eye. Lot pitches his tent facing towards, hear me, Sodom and Gomorrah. This location affords Lot to be captivated, not by the sanctified life, but by the city life. <laughs> Abram is honoring God. Looking. God, where would you have me to go? God, it's all about you, God. It's, it's your will, God. I, I want what you have for me, God. Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. Channel Sodom and Gomorrah. That's interesting. <laughs> That's a man or a woman? <laughs> Let me make this clearer. Because the scene might be fuzzy, could be me. Oh my gosh, two men. Yeah. Wife. Come check this out. <laughs> you see this? I know he don't look right, but it's funny. <laughs> I he's swinging more than me. I stop it, wife. I hear you, girl. Stop that. <laughs> wife, his hair is not longer than yours. Stop it. 
Stop telling me you admire his heels. Stop. Junior! Gotcha. Look at his nonsense. Look, 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 look. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. I could watch it all day long. <laughs> Oh, entertain, 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 man. Entertain me. Oh, this is all I see. <laughs> Raise them up. I want you to get something, church. I, I hope you've already gotten it. Huh? That what we constantly... This is where it's going. What I turned my back on 30 years ago, today I just look at it, and it's entertaining. Don't tell me, because I'm, I'm going to say it. It's real interesting to look at that. It's, it's interesting to see people who cross-dress. It's interesting to see people he can be a boy one day and a girl the same day. That's pretty interesting stuff. Now here is the danger that what you constantly place in front of your eyes becomes acceptable over time. I want you to hear me. That the reason that some people are, oh, just that, ah, because they've got accustomed to seeing it. Oh, they're God's children. He loves them. I didn't say about that. I said they've gotten accustomed to sin. Let me say what the Bible says. The accursed thing. Yeah. <laughs> Rasty roof. <laughs> Can you imagine planning, trying to, trying to pass this house? But that gives me an idea. Can you imagine God trying to pass that house? You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's why it's so vital. Hear me, church of God, church of the holy living God, that we constantly maintain a stand of holiness because without holiness, no man shall see God. It doesn't matter what people accept. I want to accept what God said is acceptable. And you may, you may not be able to look at some things that are acceptable. You may have to stand and say, oh, no, I'm not crossing that line. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to expose, watch this, my children, my innocent children. And in 10 years, it will be the norm for them. That's the plan and the trick of the enemy. Put it out there so much that in five years, in 10 years, it becomes the norm. Oh, they're okay. Sin is sin. I don't know if I'm finished with the house. Stay there a minute. <laughs> Let me talk about it. Church, you, you have to get it today. <laughs> that, that, that what you set before your eyes on a continual basis will become what your mind takes in and eventually what your heart accepts as the normal. But Elder Doctor, I'm not stopping at normal. I'm not stopping at natural. I'm going for supernatural because one day I'm going to be caught up to meet them and that means my natural has got to become supernatural in order that I seek God. And so I'm going to live that way today. I think we got the picture. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Put your hands together for my husband and my son. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, 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 church, let's talk for a minute. I remember growing up, and on a Saturday, I would watch Red Runner and the Coyote. Beep, 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 beep. That was the harshest word, beep, beep. There you go. I will watch the Flintstones. Betty, Fred, Arnie, you got it. I will watch the Jetsons. That was high tech, y'all. The Jetsons. That was my norm. Today, the cartoons are not what they used to be. Today, the TV is training the minds of our children to accept it in a home. 
You have two mommies. Or two daddies. Yeah. Today in Australia, there's a cartoon of a male turning into a female superhero. Mm -hmm. You saw that? You saw that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, back in the day, Lord have mercy. All you did was see a couple kiss. That was enough. Today, you can see more than enough. Back in the day, scenes considered violent and offensive are, are nothing compared to what you can catch on. Watch this. CNN News Daily. The news. Lot. The land looks good. The land looks appealing and entertaining. But, verse 13, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. I'm just checking. Does your Bible say what I just? You can check it in NIV, AMP, CBR, whatever. The Bible says that the men and it focuses on the man. I keep on trying to tell you that the enemy is always out to take out the men. Because if they can take out the men, then the women will have struggles that they were never meant to have. There is no doubt in the word that God considers what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah exceedingly wicked and evil. Yet, this is where Lot pitched his tent towards, pointed Towards and positioned towards. Uh, there is no wonder why his wife, Lord, if God hit me with that, you know, his wife got caught up too. So when God's trying to get him to escape, don't look back. Don't look back. She takes a peek. What do you think she was taking a peek at? Her children weren't back there. But something had caught her. A trick and a trick. What do you think? Because it is interesting stuff, isn't it? Yeah, don't tell me it ain't. I'm a pastor confessing this stuff is interesting. See two men walking down, talking about the, I will marry you. Huh? Man in the mirror. It's captivating. That's why you have to purposely, when you see it, immediately change the channel. Because otherwise your eyes entertain it and it can creep down into your spirit. And before you know it, you're starting to accept what God said is exceedingly sinful and wicked. And church, herein lies the next level of danger. That what parents begin to accept as the norm becomes the everyday norm for their family. It is no wonder that what was not socially acceptable 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, is seen as harmless, humane, and by some honorable today, a lie. While Lot is in his tent being entertained by Sodom and Gomorrah, God has a plan for his friend Abram, 14 and 15. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Church, hear me good. God will not show, I loved this, God will not show you some things until you separate from lot. Oh. I need that to seep in. Some things you will never see until God removes you from the lot in your life. All right, all right. Let me say it another way. God will not show you some things until you separate from this lot. You like that? You like that? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you want what God has for you, you better separate from those lot. If you want what God has designed for you, you better separate from those lot. If you want God's perfect will for your life, it's time to separate from those lot. God's plan for you is unique for your life. And God will not unveil his plan and cast it 
before swine. Jesus. Holy smoke. <laughs> While Lot is facing the direction of Sodom, God instructs Abram to look all around. Catch it. <laughs> Lot is facing one direction. And all he sees is sodomy. Abram, I am a friend. That Abram, I, he calls me friend. When you are a friend of God, he will remove you from the accursed place. And then he'll tell you, I've got so much for you. You can look all around, all around, all around. Everywhere I look, the... I, I can't go any further. But look, this is what God is saying. When you're walking in my way, when you're walking according to my plan, Sodom is nowhere around you. You can, you can look north, south, east, and west, and all you see is land. You don't see any cities. You see land. Oh, Holy Ghost, you're just beautiful. Top catch, catch. Woo! The cities of the plains that Lot is looking at have already been built. But God just shows you land. <laughs> because that means you can build it how you want. Thank you, Jesus. You, you can build the house how you see it. You can build the house how God shows you. You will not be limited by what the enemy shows you. You will build the house according to as God shows you. What? You want the pearl? Put the pearl in. Want the man cave? Put the man cave in. Man cave. When the girls graduate from studio, don't worry about that. Oh, money cometh. Money cometh. When the girls graduate from college and those rooms are free, build a studio in your house. I feel, I feel. I'm just talking like I'm talking. But when you're looking and seeing as God has designed for you, then he will give you more than you could ever. Don't you ever think that the enemy of our soul has the key to your future, has the key to your house. God's got the whole world and it's in his hands. Rubies and diamonds, silver and gold. I'm a child, you're a child of king. Wherever we go, God's got the whole world in his hands. Look here, talking about land. I love it too. Is it sweet? It's, this is what the enemy don't want you to understand, the totality of God's word, you see? Oh, no. Land. God shows Abram land. God shows Abram the fruitfulness that he has for him. God shows Abram a future and a hope. While Lot is experiencing the results of looking at and admiring and being entertained by Sodom, Abraham will experience the results of being led by God. And maybe I need to convince a child of God that it is more profitable to be in God's presence than any old body's presence. It's more blessed to be in the place that God has for you. Don't seek to be entertained. Don't lower your standards. Don't do the accursed thing. Don't look at them doing the accursed thing. God has a better place for you. Yeah, so Abraham will experience the results of being led by God. And, and what are those results? All right. Let's do this. I need three persons. How am I doing? Okay. Alda, you can stand. Aaron, you can stand. And okay, the young ones are in the day. Come on, Keonji. Stand next to Aaron. Face the people. 
Come on, bye. Sprinter. Because I need you to get something here. Come this way because the camera's going to catch you. Stop. Here you go. Here, here, here. Here's what I need you to understand. God is beautiful in how he does things. While the end of Lot will be that he has no wife, hear me, and no future family because he pitched his tent towards Sodom, Abram will receive the godly reward that he and his family will be blessed for generations to come. So you have to understand that, church, that the enemy desires to cut off the possibility of, of you having seed. Let me slow it down. Some are going to catch it at the level I need you to. The enemy wants to shut down your ability to reproduce. Luck? Keep on looking at sodomy. You can't reproduce in Sodom, can you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the enemy wants to take away the ability, hear me, for your seed to be blessed. Because true sodomites, I said true ones. I ain't talking about ones that changed their mind after they had children with a woman. I'm talking about true sodomites. Don't play with me. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You've got many that turn to the accursed lifestyle after they've been with the opposite sex and had their children. So if you're looking at true sodomites, never been two guys with a woman, they'll never have seed, and therefore their generations can never be blessed. So Lot, you won't be blessed because you looked at Sodom. You took on the spirit of Sodom. Your wife perished, became a pillar of soul right there outside of the city, right where you pitched your tent. But Abram, because you were looking for a city whose builder and maker is God, here's my promise to you that not only will you have natural land, greater than the wealth of natural land is the land that is called people. And so Abram, because of your obedience, I'm going to bless your seed and your seed seed from generation to generation. So where the enemy wants to stop the blessings of God, God said, I'm in a place where I want to release my blessings. And we have to understand that the enemy wants three men standing up in a church. The enemy can't stand what this looks like. You hear me, Brother Jamal? He can't stand that man can stand up in the house of God and be the head and be the leader and represent the kingdom. But I'm coming against that plan of the enemy. And I'm saying that there will be increase in the males that worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm calling for man, real man, real man of God who know their calling, who are empowered, who know that they are blessed, who know that they carry the power, they carry the authority, they carry the ability to produce seed and that their seed will be blessed. Put your hands together. Thank you. We gotta, we gotta deal with this thing. Oh, think it's cute. Think it's about human rights. It's about God's right. I want to know what God said is right. He said, I'm not willing that any should perish. Every living, breathing human being has the ultimate human right of eternity. Lord have mercy. Uh, it doesn't matter if you did drugs, if you slap around, if you cursed, you used profanity, smoked, drank. Oh, and you did that other sodomy stuff. Oh, that don't matter. It doesn't matter when you come into God's presence and you say, God, I'm not ready. Not to pitch a tent towards that, but God, I'm ready to make my move. I'm ready to move according to what you have established as being the plan of blessings. Let, let me make it real obvious. I can't wait for the first, like, real brave former lesbian, former homosexual. To say, semen, I got it. I got delivered. I'm ready to walk in the way that God called me to walk. 
Do you need me to tell your story? I say, tell the story. Tell the story of how Jesus can change your life. Tell the story how God can make your life brand new. How God can cause you to start over again. See, I believe that. Sodom living will never produce a family. Only godly living will produce a family. 16 through 18. And I will make thy seed as <laughs> the dust of the ground, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, <laughs> walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of memory, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So God, after you save me, God, after you show me, God, after you sanctify me, it's time to make another move. And God, will you take me, God, the, the place where you take me, God, it's not about me, it's about you. Look, look. Lot thought Sodom looked good. Oh no, God had memory for you, Abraham. Memory means, watch this, fat, <laughs> strong ruler. This was a place of, watch this, the mighty oak tree. Started out small, but just because we pitched our tent at memory, look what God has done. This is a place where God will increase the seed of Abram from one to a number that cannot be counted. Why? Because Abram knew where to pitch his tent. Saints of God, director, when you are where God has designed for you to be, you will do what Abram did. You will build an altar. You will take your time at memory because you want to understand God, you brought me from a mighty long way. God, God, it could have been that I had been distracted, but my heart was toward you. So I want to sanctify this place before I have popcorn and vitamin water. I want to build you an altar. God, before I have a housewarming party, I, I want to build you an altar. Church, when God takes you to your place, your place called memory, the place of the mighty oak, the strong place, the fat place, the place where you grew, build an altar right there. Say, God, I thank you. I lift up my voice and I, I give you a high note of praise because you brought me from a mighty long way. Church, where will you pitch your tent? Where will you face? What will you keep in front of your eyes? Make your move. It's time to make your move. Overshadow. I don't want to be overshadowed by the world's standards. I, 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 I know, I know the fight is on. Not everybody's going to be excited about this standard that I'm calling, reminding God's people that God has set. Mama, not everybody's going to be excited when I say that we've got to re-establish holiness, sanctity for our children. You may survive it. What about the little ones? What about the little ones? That's why we have to make our voice known. Overshadow. Overshadow. 
a spot on point lesson with Dr. Maria. Time. God created time for the order of mankind. Mankind needs time to give order to their day. As you listen to this lesson, time ticks on for you. You have time right now. Yet time ended for someone yesterday and it will end for another today. Their time just transformed into eternity. For them, time is no more. Yet you still have time, time to live, and time to choose where you shall spend your after time or eternity. Tick tock, time still continues for you. How will you use your time? Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hebrews 3, 13 But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You have time right now. Choose to use it wisely. Make Jesus your choice today. Blessings abound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first believed When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've loveless days to sing God's grace than when we'd first begun. We know that you have enjoyed this sermon. For a copy of this sermon in CD or DVD format in its entirety, please visit our website at www.swim-international.com or email us at swim at logic.bm. We look forward to hearing from you. Amen.